This is Take a Cue, Season 2, Episode 9. One, two, three, four. Welcome to Season 2 of Take a Cue. I'm Jen Wise, 4th and 5th grade instrumental music teacher from Northern New Jersey. My colleague and co-host of Take a Cue, Eric Dunno, could not be with us for this one, uh, but we have a really special guest, Mr. Jeff Bittner from the Mawa Public Schools, who is here to share his insights about teaching the first clarinet lesson with you. Before we begin, if you enjoy our podcast, please help us out by doing a few super easy things. First, subscribe on your favorite podcast app. Then make sure you rate the podcast and leave a review. It helps people find our show who haven't yet, and we really appreciate it. If you find that you get a lot out of our episodes, we'd be grateful if you considered becoming a monthly supporter to help us grow the podcast. You can sign up to make a secure monthly payment using the link in our show notes or on our Spotify for Podcasters site. Also, if you have questions or comments about anything you hear on the episode, come and interact with us on social media. We are Take a Q Podcast on Facebook and Instagram. And this episode, I really, really, really recommend uh, you check us out on YouTube because uh, Mr. Bittner gives us some really great insights into playing the clarinet, playing the clarinet for the first time, how to communicate all that to your students. He does some really great demonstrations of the embouchure that you're definitely going to want to see. So uh, without any further ado, let's meet Mr. Bittner and hear what we should be doing in our first lessons on the clarinet. Hey, Jeff, welcome to Take a Cue. Hey, Jen. It's hey. a pleasure to be here. Oh, I'm so glad you could make it today. And uh, uh, yeah, we're, we're going to talk all about all about clarinet. This is this is the best. Um, I know our, our, our listeners have come come to us to just say, like, we want some tips and tricks and pedagogy and let's get let's get into it. Let's get into the details. So uh, I know you could can shed some light on all that for us this is this is great so um i hope uh, to be able to do all that oh yeah yeah so um for our listeners uh uh do you want to tell us a little bit about yourself a little bit about your uh teaching and clarinet experience before we get into the the nitty-gritty sure so uh i'm now in my 21st year at mawa high school i know that doesn't sound like a lot of beginner clarinet but I did, uh, I did teach elementary school for my first three years uh, before going to Mawa. Uh, and, and of course, I teach a lot of uh, beginners, you know, from, the, from day one, you know, just for private lessons. And uh, let's see, you know, uh, my story was kind of funny, you know, because uh, I started in fourth grade and... I was one of those kids that did not do very well at the clarinet for, at the beginning. I, I, I was put in one of those uh, groups but in my second year of because I couldn't play above the break. Oh. I couldn't play above the break. And I was in that, that lesson group that had like the, the, uh, a, another flute player, myself, uh, another another student that was struggling. I was in that struggling student class. I have that group, the the remediation uh, lesson group. I've yeah. I've got one of those right now. Okay, that was me. I was from. I was I was in that, you know, and uh, and then after that, I I moved. I moved to another district, and that district didn't have a music program. Uh, so I was I from sixth grade through eighth grade, I didn't play. Oh wow. Yeah. And, uh, and so that was, uh, you know, uh, I didn't realize how disheartened I was, you know, mm-hmm. at the time, but I ended up, you know, starting to, uh, miss that a lot. So I just picked up the clarinet for fun, mm-hmm. uh, and, and everything. And the second I started again, I played over the break. Hey, there you go. Yeah. And it was like <laughs> the best feeling. And mm-hmm. I've, I just needed time. I guess I just needed time to mature. Uh, mm-hmm. But anyway, uh, my uh, I started again in high school, and and then and then uh, ended up going to William Patterson for my uh, undergraduate uh, for for uh, music ed and clarinet performance, and I studied with Bill Shadel, oh. uh, and uh, and then went to Ithaca College uh, for my master's right away, and studied with Michael Galvan. Oh, great. 
Yeah. Yeah. That's uh that's that's some great experience. Yeah. You're also you also play and um you've been you 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 perform as a as a clarinetist as well and um uh it, it, I know you're in New Jersey Wind Symphony. Um, any other ensembles? You New Jersey Wind Symphony, you know, pretty much full time, mm-hmm. B flat and E flat clarinet, mm-hmm. uh, and then uh, I perform in the summers with the T net Community Band, which is a whole lot of fun. Oh yeah, great music, uh, and uh, and then before that, I've I play I've played in. So many uh, little pickup orchestras here and there, and pit orchestras for high schools, and uh, and I've even substituted in the New Jersey Symphony. I try to play as much as possible. Yeah, that's that's amazing. And for me, it's uh, that's a that's a tough thing to to keep up um, to keep up with the playing. But yeah, um, that's, that's a whole that's other so cool. podcast. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. Uh, um, so. You know where where should we start? You know we want to we definitely want to talk about you know the first with the first the first lesson the first things we do when when we're going to approach the the clarinet. Yeah, where where should where should we start with our students? I have my experience from when I first started teaching. You know, teaching fourth grade, uh, and you know you get the students in September, and I think the first things that you have to do. Uh, and this is even before you even see the students is when the instruments get delivered that you take care of some of the things that are going to normally be in their way at the first lesson. Mm -hmm. And, uh, that, that all depends on if the instruments are delivered to the school or if the students have to pick up their instrument from the music store. Mm -hmm. Um, but the first thing I do is try to uh, I try to take all the instruments out of the plastic and out of whatever, and I check all the corks, and I make sure that the co- that they're going to be able to put the instrument together successfully, because sometimes that could derail an entire uh, entire few lessons where the kids are just not strong enough to uh, put the instrument together. They're struggling, uh, so I go into every clarinet. I check out the quarks. I try to put them together myself and see how how tough they are. Mm-hmm. And if the quarks are really tough, then I then I I start to wear them down a little bit. I'll try by just cork greasing them first, and then uh, and then putting them together mm-hmm. uh, and trying to wear down the quarks. All right, okay. just going back and forth. All right, with the barrel and with the different joints, mm-hmm. uh, and it just makes that first couple lessons that much easier because they're going to have success. Mm-hmm. putting the instrument together yeah i'm so um, glad you said that i i do that as as well and i like i i yeah i take out all that plastic i throw it out and i just make sure everything's like oh where's the reed they don't have to dig for it the reed that comes with it is right on top so they can find it and yeah totally yeah so uh so that's the first thing before you even uh see the students uh when the students come in you know the the first lesson is you know you have to be able to open the case properly so we 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 do the opening the case, you know, uh, trying to uh, put the put the case in a safe place. Uh, it, either have them do it on the floor, or have them do it on a chair where they're kneeling in front of the chair. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then I I make it really fun. Open now you get to open the left latch, then you open the right latch. Yay! And then <laughs> then we open up. Open up the clarinets all at the same time together. You make sure that the that the label is on the top, uh, and I'll even sometimes uh, go beyond that, and I'll put some sort of sticker or a piece of tape to make sure that, that they know what the top of the case is. Mm-hmm. And I think that's really important, yeah. all right? Because you don't want to open the case upside down and have everything spill out, and then and then we have even more trouble. Mm-hmm. You know, so we do do all these preventative measures ahead of time. Yeah, and they come home and they're like, "Oh, Mr. Bittner gave me this cool sticker in my first lesson." <laughs> yeah, and of course, my I would put uh, mustache tape on the tops of the oh, cases yeah. and everything. That's the stuff. So, oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, and uh-huh. we had a summer music program where the the incoming fourth graders were start over the summer, hmm. and. Uh, and a lot of those kids that I taught are in high school now, and they still have the mustache tape on the tops yes. of their cases. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. yeah. 
That's good. So uh, it's really kind of kind of fun and funny at the same That's time. Good. So setting them up for success. Mm-hmm. So doing all yeah. those things uh, in in the first lesson and uh, and then when we get when we get started, it's it's all about embouchure first mm-hmm. and making and making the first sounds. Uh, we're not going to put the whole clarinet together in the first lesson. We might not even put the whole clarinet together in the second or third lesson. It might just be mouthpiece and barrel. Mm-hmm. All right, and then. And then we add the, the top joint after m- mouthpiece and barrel uh, and not even bother with the bell or the bottom, the bottom stack. Um, and, and I'd like to get into that a little bit. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. So, uh, what, so do we want, we, we want, uh, what do we take out of the case first? So good question. Okay. All right. So, so we're, look, we're looking into our you know, our treasure trove that we have in front of us now. And, and probably the first thing we're going to have to do is the read. So, uh, you know, yeah, we identify all the different parts first and then, and then we do the, we take out the read and we learn how to soak the read. And, and then, and then we learn how to, uh, attach that reed to the mouthpiece and and students are are all over the place with that first they'll try to they they'll try to stick the reed inside the mouthpiece they'll try to do everything if you don't if you don't guide them first mm-hmm. you know so uh while the reed's in their mouth I'll give them an explanation of of the mouthpiece mm-hmm. you know and how the reed has the flat end of the reed has to stick onto the flat end of the mouthpiece mm-hmm. you know and that you have to line up the we will call the the tip of the read the smile the smile or the frown okay <laughs> you know like and we want to have yeah. that lining up with the the top of the the mouthpiece and make sure it goes flat end to flat end okay. um i'm more of a fan of read on first then put the ligature on uh I feel like students have a little more trouble, especially nowadays, with uh, trying to slip the reed through the ligature. Yeah, I don't have success with that. I, I, I'm, I'm with you. Put the ligature on over the reed and mouthpiece. Yeah. yeah. So I'm teaching them how to line up the the reed on the mouthpiece, okay, uh, and without touching the tip of the reed, all right, because they're going to want to touch the tip and then they break it and everything. So uh, then. Lining up things with their thumbs. Keep one thumb on the the uh, the butt end of the mouthpiece, uh, the reed, and 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 then lining it up that way and just wiggling it back and forth until it's straight. So we start we start with that, uh, you know, and then I make them take it off again and put it back on, and we just how do practice you describe, that. Like, how do you describe how tight to? tighten the screws what what do you like how do you like what words do you use because I'll, I'll say like I, it has to be hand tight and they're like what does that mean like you yeah. know and I'm just like oh right that's like yeah so how, how do you describe that so if you have a, a two screwed ligature uh you would I, I i first of all you have to make sure that the the screws are facing the correct direction i'll see i'll see kids with the screws all over the place yeah. Uh, they're on the side. They're, uh, sometimes they'll see other players that are more experienced and they have an inverted ligature. Right. And they think that the, that the screws need to be on the top like their, their friend in seventh grade right. you know, or something like that. Then, uh, then you have to make sure that the screws are facing you on, their, on your right. Mm-hmm. And hopefully, uh, you know, you, you might have to teach them left and right. So, yeah. right, because that, <laughs> yeah. that, that's happening. Uh, so we, so we, uh, you know, make sure that the screws are on the right. I tell them to make the bottom screw super tight okay. and, and you have to tighten away from you. Mm-hmm. All right. Away. And, uh, and then the top screw just snug. Okay. I just say I like snug. That. Just snug. Okay. Yeah. Uh, because if the, if the top screw is just as tight as the bottom screw, the mm-hmm. bottom screw is really what is going to hold that reed in. Mm-hmm. And then the top screw actually is what affects the vibration of the reed. Mm-hmm. So if that's really tight, the reed's not going to vibrate super well. And then you, you might get more squeaks and you might get, uh, you know, less of a response. Mm-hmm. So I just say snug. 
snook. Okay, I like yeah. that. I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start using that. I'm gonna give that one a try. I mean, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna give that one a try. Snook. Okay. Yeah. And then uh, also about the read, uh, a lot of teachers at, and and students don't realize that the whole read needs to be wet. So they'll put the tip of the reed in their mouth, and that's it. Yeah. So uh, I I always refine that with okay, you're gonna you're gonna wet the tip of the reed, you're gonna soak the tip of the reed uh-huh. in your mouth, and then you're gonna flip it over and put the opposite end of the reed, and then sometimes they they're like they flip it upside down or whatever. Right. So yeah. Um, and and the the bottom of the reed is actually called the butt b u t t, and you know that might be questionable to say <laughs> in school. I don't know. I, I sometimes you just you just do it anyway, and you laugh and they laugh, and right. and then we and then we get over it. Right. And and then you're like, okay, put the butt end of the reed, you know, and just uh-huh. and just <laughs> wet that wet it super quick, just for uh-huh. two seconds. Okay. And then and then the reed should just stick to the mouthpiece. And sometimes I'll I'll even have them just put the reed on the mouthpiece. Uh, flat end to flat end and see if it sticks okay <clears throat> well that's good yeah that might not be a day one okay. uh, event though that might yeah. be a a week two week three mm-hmm. trial yeah gotcha so but having that seal with the reed mm-hmm. is really important if the whole reed is wet then you get that seal and you get half the amount of squeaks there you go because that's of that mm-hmm. i love that always in the business of reducing reducing squeaks yes so, that, that's yeah. that's what we do yeah all right so we've got our read on our mouthpiece we've got the ligature uh you know tightened we've we've got it assembled are we is it on top of the barrel yes uh, okay. i was just thinking about that too so we get mm-hmm. that mouthpiece onto the barrel first okay. because that way you have a lot more to hold on to when you're putting on the read so it, that makes life a lot easier. So mm-hmm. mouthpiece and barrel, all right, get, get that twisted on and the cork is already worked on mm-hmm. uh, and, and such. Um, I try not to mess with cork grease the first day because that gets really messy. So uh, that's why I pre-grease the corks right. uh, bef- uh, before their first lesson. Uh, and then in a future lesson, teach them how to cork grease properly. Gotcha. You know, once they have a little bit more established. So the mouthpiece is now on the barrel. And we now have the reed on that whole setup. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then, and now it's time to make our first sounds. And, and of course, we have to teach them, okay, the reed's going to go on the bottom lip. Okay, not the, t- mm-hmm. not the top. All right, the reed's going to be facing you. So... You know, say hi to your reed, all right, and and mm-hmm. then they'll 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 have some fun with that, mm-hmm. and then uh, and then teaching the the embouchure, they need to know where to put their bottom lip. It's really hard to see with my facial hair, huh. all right. But there's a spot where uh, there's a line, all right, at the bottom of your bottom lip, all right, where your lip ends and your chin begins, uh-huh. and that's what I tell them. All right, find that line, all right, and then. And now also look at your mouthpiece and read. And I want you to look at where your read, look at the profile, the side, and look at where there's a very slight separation where the read starts to pull away. Mm. And, there, uh, and we want that connection. It's somewhere in what we call the heart of the read. All right, there's the tip, and then in the middle is the heart of the read. Okay, so the, that heart of the read is a, about a point where the, the separation is going to occur. And we want that, that line on the lip to be right at that separation. And that contact point would be the sweet spot. Okay. okay. So we, we line up that, and then we just have the top teeth then go on the, the mouthpiece. Uh, and and that, should be, that should be set. Because if you set the bottom lip, the top teeth are going to be already in line where where it, it's supposed to be okay you know, that makes so sense some, to me. some people yeah. try to go oh, a quarter of an inch they're not gonna really get that yeah so to, there has to be a visual attached I guess yeah that. we yeah. that okay. can be tweaked mm-hmm. you know from from week to week mm-hmm. gotcha. I believe mm-hmm. uh, another thing with the mouthpiece is that uh, 
if we want to have our teeth on the top uh, of the mouthpiece, we want them to be comfortable. Right. So mouthpiece patches. Mm. All right, we, uh, I'll have a mouthpiece patch already put on every mouthpiece. So, uh, you know, we try to try to get that in your budget. Try or try to, if you have to. I mean, I I just bought mouth mouthpieces patches on my own yeah. all the time. I, I still gonna, do. I, I, I still do. They cost six dollars. Like, I was gonna say it's like you can get a dozen on Amazon for like eight bucks now or something. It's like they're, yeah. they're pretty cheap. I always tell them like, okay, first one's a free, first one's on me, and then you know if it peels off or gets yucky or whatever, like you know go get go get your you know next one or so you do that ahead of time that's great i've been doing that in the second lesson because i i i i never end up getting to that step like i never have enough time to like prep the instrument and put the mouth and but i should maybe i should should reconsider that and try and get that on there ahead of time so yeah maybe try to make that part of the prep the prep okay so so yeah so we have now we have the we have everything set up now we're trying to get ready to to make our first sounds Mm -hmm. Okay, and uh, I use a really simple set of uh, I use I use a consonant and two vowels. So okay. I will use m. Mm, all right, to get that's our first. The, the m is our our consonant. Okay. All right, and that that's going to set our lips together. M. Mm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay, and it's pretty much like it, that's like almost every instrument. Uh, yeah. So we're starting with mm, and that's going to make sure that our cheeks don't puff out. If we just keep a good mm, and we try to and we try to force our te- cheeks to puff, they mm-hmm. won't puff. Mm-mm. Mm, and oh, and we really want to keep our our yeah our our, our it, it's hard to puff, mm-hmm. right? So yeah. so that that gets you know everything set up the upper lip against the against the bottom. Mm, okay. Then, then we say e, which is actually the vowel inside your mouth. Mm-hmm. Okay, because uh, the the voicing of the clarinet, uh, what I've been taught uh, is always e. It's like shh, shh. I call that the angry cat. Yeah. All right, like hissing, <laughs> and uh, and and that we refine a little bit later too. So mm-hmm. so m e, and then lastly is u. So that the corners of the lips are going towards the mouthpiece, and not spreading out, making that uh, making the smile embouchure. Hmm. Uh, in old school clarinet days, smile embouchure was the thing, oh. and uh, and later on, uh, as people were going for more uh, richer, darker sounds, the the embouchure started getting more towards the center, hmm. and making that bottom lip into more of a much thicker pillow. Okay. So I'll even use a pillow analogy, uh-huh. or we want that to be a nice cushiony pillow underneath your reed. Uh-huh. All right, just supporting, all right? yeah. just like your head on a pillow when you, you when you're sleeping. Uh-huh. So they'll like little analogies like that too. Yeah. So m e u. All right, and then you get yeah. that, you know, really thick cushion on the bottom lip. All right, uh-huh. and then you can even refine that, and you can just switch it all to q. Oh. Q like that. Okay. Uh, uh, that's after they've established an m, mm, and the e inside, and the and the u, and or even q, view, view will also do the same thing. Okay. So you have a, you have multiple options, and mm-hmm. you you can you can use the same thing for a while, and when and when those stop being interesting to the students, then you can try some of the other ones. Mm. Yeah, that's good. I like to do that as like, you know, okay, like try one or two different like new things. Because sometimes if I throw them all at them at once, it's like, wait a minute, am I doing this? Am I making this? Like, and they get, you know. So, yeah, I, I, I like it's you got to have a couple extra tools uh, in your tool belt for, for that one. Yes. Yes. So that's the embouchure. And and then 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 we're hopefully able to now like get everything set up to to make that first sound uh and you know i don't i don't get into super deep breathing in the mm-hmm. first lessons uh-huh. you know i i just tell them to take in a, a really deep breath mm-hmm. you know and, and then we just go yeah 
Gotcha. And, and then, uh, and then right away, uh, either it's going to be, you know, it's going to be, they're going to make some sort of sound. It's either going to be a, you know, nasty squeaky sound or something, you know, mm-hmm. something might come out perfectly pleasant. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But, uh, but the, on that first day, just be happy that something comes out. Uh, what you want ideally on that first pitch uh, mm-hmm. is actually a concert F sharp. Okay. Right. You want it to be a concert F sharp on the mouthpiece and barrel. Okay. Uh, okay. And so you know you want to try to associate a pitch mm-hmm. somehow. Yeah. All right. And of course, the teacher we'd be modeling that you know with with that pitch, mm-hmm. and we want to try to get them to match match that pitch. Yeah. Uh, so what we want is a good uh, air speed, mm-hmm. you know, and and so we want to get that. I, I use I use car analogies all the time. Uh, okay. I use miles per hour. Mm-hmm. So we want to get that air moving sixty miles per hour, and then a kid will play the at perfectly at sixty. And if a kid mm-hmm. is a little flat, oh, that oh. sounds like it's forty miles per hour right now. Can you get it to go sixty? You Step know, the and ass, <laughs> and I, I think that I think that really helps them visualize. Mm-hmm. You know, and that works all the way through high school. That works. That works through college. Professionals. Yeah, I was going to say that's that's a pretty versatile like image for them. Yeah, Yeah. that's cool. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then I go into how long can you hold that note now? Mm -hmm. So we'll go into uh, note note speed games. Okay. You know, how long can can you hold it for? Four seconds, Mm ten seconds. Uh, I'll show off and hold it for however i however long i can that day now we're not quite tonguing yet when do you introduce tonguing in this process so probably by then the lesson would have been over okay <laughs> where yeah. where we where we got to that you know <laughs> yeah, putting all that sure. together depending on the lengths of your lessons right and i always, i tell the students and the parents don't put the whole clarinet together when you get home uh-huh. All right, just just uh, just practice on the mouthpiece and the barrel. Yeah, uh, you know, for the for the first week, sometimes two weeks, probably as soon as possible, though. Okay. And just on the mouthpiece and barrel, yeah. we're not going to wait till they put everything together trying to play a G or an E. You know, mm-hmm. now we're work- Now we're worried about fingerings. Now we're worried about the weight of the instrument. All those okay. things getting in the way. Uh, you want to try to be able to do that on the on the mouthpiece and barrel as soon as possible yeah so and uh so it's either lesson one or lesson two hopefully uh and if they were able to to make that seal okay and get that sound out for at least four seconds because if they don't have enough uh air speed and and understanding you know the way their air moves across all right Mm -hmm. then they're not going to be able to tongue correctly either Mm. So if if they have their air at 60 miles per hour, by the way, air needs to go forward, not downward. Right. Um, and that's something especially beginner teachers need to know be, because the clarinet points down, kids are going to want to blow their air down. Mm-hmm. So we need to blow that air straight. So we give them something to aim at. Uh, maybe it's something on, on the wall or a board, a target, a picture, yeah. uh, something get that air moving forward okay and then we can get tugging started Uh so after after that air is moving correctly so the uh the way i teach tonguing is to have them play place the tip of their tongue at the tip of the reed first and and make a seal so they're gonna so here here's the here's the reed here's the tongue and it should be closing off the tip okay Uh so we want that we want the tongue to close that off, and then the tongue releases the air. Mm, so okay. rather than the tongue becoming a striking mm-hmm. mechanism where it's hitting, yeah. we want the tongue to be releasing that air. So I want them, I'll have them build up pressure, mm-hmm. okay, and then release the pressure. Okay. And then add the tongue back like it's a valve. Oh, okay. And that's okay. how I've had the most success. And right. sometimes, uh, even at the high school level, I, I have to correct uh, students' tonguing. Uh-huh. And I'll go back to that 
and they the high schoolers get that in one lesson even though it's you know you can't teach an old dog new tricks uh they're they're all they're all able to get that when i do that trick with them okay it's got to teach new tricks (laughs) you know oh my clarinets are not going to go know what hit them this week let's keep going (laughs) yeah (laughs) so so yeah yeah the tonguing it's 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 really important and uh you know, I'll do fun games with them. I'll do, uh, I'll have them do rhythms with, okay. with the tonguing. Uh, and it's a, a lot of, uh, a lot of imitation. All right. And this actually really helps with your, uh, improvisation standards. All mm-hmm. right. If we're having trouble figuring out, you know, what to do with our 2020 standards, one of the big ones being improvisation is, yeah. uh, you know, you start with imitation and you go like, you know, four quarter notes. You know, like uh, I use T, all right, as my uh, syllable, uh, as my vowel and consonant. T, 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 all right, and then I switch that to T, 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 all right, okay. whispering that. Uh, mm-hmm. We can do this with or without the the apparatus, and then uh, change some rhythms around and see if they can imitate those. Like go into the the typical T, 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 and have them try that. Okay. Uh, and then switch where the eighth notes are, uh, and and then push their limits. Can can they even do a triplet on you know imitated? Can they, can they go as fast as sixteenth notes imitated? Mm-hmm. Uh, and then and then they have a repertoire. They have they have a li- a laundry list of things that they can imitate. Yeah. So then uh, so so then okay now it's your turn and we're going to copy you. Okay. And that like gets that. them tonguing. Yes. Yeah. And and it gets them improvising and you can check off that off of your standards list as well. Yeah. I do that also Good. with every new note. Every new note they learn. Yeah. Uh have them do it in in many different ways, not just mm-hmm. oh, here's the new note in the lesson book. All right. Mm-hmm. Now and now let's try to add it to all the other notes. Right, right. Yeah. So we're going to drive that note, you know, like crazy. Right. In, yeah. in many diff- it, in many different ways. Yeah, we're gonna make it part of what we do. It's just mm-hmm. yeah, that's great. Awesome. Um so uh we're tonguing, we've got our mouthpiece and barrel, our embouchure is picture perfect. Is it time for the top joint? It is. Okay. Yeah. So of course, uh putting putting together the instrument you have to be very careful. All right, we're adding that top joint. And we have to make sure that we are holding the instrument properly and not damaging it as we're putting it together. Yeah. So we want to have damage-free uh, assembly. Yep. Okay. So we're going to be holding. Uh, we're going to try to close the keys, close the rings with our with one of our hands. It all depends on what's your dominant hand. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, because I'll tend. I'm a left hand. I'm lefty. So I tend to hold the mouthpiece and the barrel up here and and then twist with the right mm. and put that together and that that's whatever whatever is comfortable for the kid uh but we're, we have to make sure those keys are closed we want to make sure that we're uh holding the keys down and then not bending any of the rods okay oh. uh and and you can say hold on to as much of the black part of the instrument as possible rather than the 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 silver keys mm-hmm. So, uh, so now we're, we're, and we're using quarter, tiny twists. All right. Little quarter twists back and forth. Kids will sometimes try to wring it like a towel and try to go all the way across. Like it has screws on it. Yeah. You know, so, uh, so we're going to just do little half or quarter twists, twist and push at the same time. Twist and push is what I use. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then, uh, and then that's together and and now we have only half a clarinet though right so uh what do we do with you know now how do we know how do we know which hand we're putting on top uh one of my clarinet teachers actually told a story that for months and months and months he was playing with the wrong hand on top and the teacher never noticed oh no yeah so uh we have to make sure that they know their left and their right you know uh and 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 how to you know how to put that hold the hold at least the thumb and the first finger, mm-hmm. okay. Uh, 
And uh, when they f- put the f- top joint on, I usually have them hold it from the barrel up here uh-huh. at first uh-huh. and then try to make a sound just on the, on that open G. All okay. right. Holding it from the from the barrel section because they're okay. used to holding it from the barrel. Yeah. All right. And then we'll make our way down. All right. Mm-hmm. And and then the next note that I, I teach is E. OK. Thumb and first finger. All right. Mm-hmm. Get it. Getting that getting that going. Uh, the bottom cork of the top joint okay. just gently okay. with their right hand, not pressing any of the side keys. Um, you know, they can even plug the end off if they want to, because it's okay. not going to affect anything. Uh-huh. Um, and then and then we're hopefully doing the same thing that we did with the mouthpiece and barrel uh, playing a long tone as long as we can on the new note and then hopefully tonguing on that note as well. And then we add then we add our second finger. All right. And then uh, on just the top joint, you're not going to get a regular C. C natural is not going to come out. It's going to come out of C sharp. Yeah. So it makes hot cross buns really funky. Yeah, it's real spicy. That's what I say. It's I'm super like, spi- I'm super like, spicy. I'm like, we're going to play spicy hot cross buns today. Yeah. So there, the, you can close off the bottom and mm-hmm. get more of a C. But then there's also, there's also a device that they make and th- this is a little hard to get because i okay. i got one and i had to order it from germany what <laughs> <laughs> yes i think i think it was germany and the the device is called uh uh aurus a u r u s okay that's the that's the company and they make a they make s- some funky embouchure tools and things like that but they also make this little extension that you just put on the bottom cork and it gives you a low C. Cool. All yeah, right. I I have one. It costs about uh-huh. $25. So it's a okay. little pricey, you know, mm-hmm. for a school music program, I would say. Yeah. I was uh, going to say maybe maybe we could like 3D print one or something and you see prob- if it works, you, you know. You, yeah. I'm pretty sure that the device itself is 3D printed. Oh, already. Yeah. oh okay. All right. So, hmm. uh I'd be happy to show you that uh, and and uh, and send you uh, links to that as well. Yeah. If you yeah, if you'd like yeah, to uh, post that somewhere, uh, yeah. yeah. And it just adds that little little bit of extra, you know, holding room for that because uh, for me uh, and and my beginners, uh, I I really believe that again the embouchure is the most important thing, and if we put mm-hmm. the whole clarinet together too soon. You wreck the embouchure, yeah. And a lot of teachers put the whole thing together uh, as as soon as possible, and and then and then now they wonder why the the students are struggling uh, with their pitch, why they're playing so flat, uh, mm-hmm. why they're squeaking a lot, uh, why their hand positions might not be ideal. Okay. You know, yeah. and uh, and I would say take as much time as possible until they can move all three fingers really well for hot cross buns, even playing an A, all right, okay. with the first finger. That's a whole other podcast. Sure. Is getting that, yeah. is getting that hand position for the A. Yeah. Uh, correct. Uh, and, and, and spending as much time on that, f- uh, the top joint. Mm. Uh, and they're going to get sick of it, and they're going to beg, Mr. Bittner, all right, when can oh, we yeah. put the rest of the clarinet together? It's been three weeks. You know, it's been four. Right. It's been it's October. Yeah. You know, uh, you know, uh, and I was like, and I would just say, uh, I would just say, it's soon. It's coming soon. Mm-hmm. All right, be able to hold that low C for uh, ten counts. Right. And then, yep. and then, and then maybe we can add the bottom joint today. Mm-hmm. That's it. I keep and then I you have to saying, go into well, the whole your third and and yeah. then and then we get into right hand position. Right hand position. That's right a, hand position. My my first year players are are diving into that right now, or it's yes. February, right? So yeah, here we are. And that's good. I, I, that's mm-hmm. good that it's that they're 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 getting the left hand solid first, mm-hmm. and they and they have an embouchure first. Uh-huh. So uh so now we ha- now we have the bottom half on and okay. we've t- we've put it together and 
we we all checked the bridges to make sure that the bridges lined up perfectly okay uh and that's really critical uh i still see students with crooked bridges coming in even to the high school level mm-hmm. so uh you have and and i've seen also multiple uh frustrated teachers oh my clarinet's not the student's clarinet's not working and they don't check the bridge yeah and then they're sending their clarinet to the repair shop because they think that the instrument's not working but they the student just didn't have it together perfectly you on the neck straps for beginners camp i am okay with neck straps i think whatever whatever is going to help Mm -hmm. uh, a student be successful that we do it yeah so i i'm great with neck straps yeah that week we put the bottom joint on i'm also handing them a neck strap showing them how to adjust it how to get it on their clarinet so like we don't always get a ton of playing with the right hand like you said it's more just like feeling the weight of the instrument doing what we did before but now like okay this week you're going to try the neck strap you're going to try and get that to work for you um here's where your right hand should be but the neck strap's doing a lot of the work so that's that's kind of where what i've been doing with that that That, step now thumb position Hmm. we we need to have a good thumb position underneath the thumb rest and that actually is the make or break thing for the for the clarinet and that's that's also going to help with the break uh one of the reasons why i couldn't play over the break besides the tight embouchure was most likely uh was most likely a poor right hand position Mm -hmm. okay Uh, and the right hand position is actually set by the thumb kids always put too much thumb under the thumb rest like yeah, they, they they have it on the bone here, mm. you know, or like way back here, like almost to the palm, okay. and it should be at the corner of the thumbnail, all right, mm-hmm. and where the thumbnail, just like how the lip, you know, the lip ends and the chin begins, where the thumbnail ends and the thumb begins, yeah, you know, right before the first knuckle, okay. all right, of the thumb, all right, you want it to be there, and. Uh, I just get a box of Band-Aids, hmm. all right, non-latex, okay. and, uh, and then have them wrap their thumb around that okay. contact point with the Band-Aid. And then okay. I'll just say, everybody, put, your, put, your, uh, ba- put the Band-Aid on, uh-huh. and now put that, put that Band-Aid right under the thumb rest. Okay, that's cool. And that sets the position for the thumb. Uh-huh. And then... Because if the thumb's in too far, your fingers retract like this. How yeah. many times have you seen hand positions oh my gosh, that look yeah. like the claw? Mm-hmm. You know, so we want to get rid of the claw and have a nice round hand position. Another yeah, thing and that I always show them, like with for me, I'm like, look at my hands. Look at how long my fingers are. If I put my thumb rest where yours is look where my fingers go and then look what my hand looks like. And you don't want your hands to look like that when you're old like me, and, you know, <laughs> and, and they're like, Oh, you know, ew. <laughs> so, that's, that's perfect. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I show them too. Cause uh, you know, like, like we said before, like they definitely need that visual too, you know, of what, yeah. what happens when you do it incorrectly. Yeah. So, uh, also to get their hands in that nice, more rounded, not, we don't arch our fingers on the clarinet. The fingers should be relatively flat. Mm-hmm. Okay, and we want the puffy parts of our fingers to cover the holes and not our fingertips. Mm-hmm. All right, that's also another beginner mistake is uh, too much fingertip, not enough puffy pad. All right, mm-hmm. go remember that our fingers are the pads. All right, for okay. the for the clarinet. So, we want to have as much of the the puffy part to fill in the tone hole, fill in the chimneys. Okay. And uh, we what uh, I do it by having the kids shake out their hands mm-hmm. and put them up and then put up your hands naturally, and they should have a natural curve like that. That works with a lot of other instruments too. Mm-hmm. That could work with flute, picking them up, and then uh, yeah. brass. You get the nice round hand position that way too. You know, whatever is the most natural. You know, does this look natural? That's that's what you, that's what I right. would always uh, yeah. you know joke with them too. If you just have them shake out their hands, if they're squeaking a lot beforehand, mm-hmm. have them shake out yeah. their hands and reposition, almost uh, 100% they'll not squeak the next time they go to try that note. Mm. Okay, cool. So, so yeah, the thumb is the key. 
to the whole right hand. And that'll put the pinkies in the right position and everything. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, yeah, so maybe. reads. Reads. Um, yeah. I mean, I would say, you know, at first, your, your typical Rico or Daddario reads now, I think they changed the name, yeah. uh, are, are still okay in the beginning. Uh, I do recommend that, you know, read strengths. Uh, are actually probably even more important at first than the the read brand itself, okay. and uh, I would I would try to get them on two and a halves as quickly as possible. Um, and uh, you know you can go from the the regular Ricos or Dodarios to the Royals. Mm-hmm. All right, the Royals are just a little bit better uh, cut of material, and then. Then you can go to a Van Doren, but Van Dorens are going to be more expensive, and they run about a half size higher than regular Rico reeds. Right. Um, Van Doren also makes a they make a student model reed called Juno. I I don't find a huge difference as long as uh, they're not buying those packs uh, from Amazon that comes come in like the thin clear box and you get like they're like that yeah those are really about? scary Whew, those are oh man i just you know you hold them up to the light and the things looks like upside down and backwards and you're like no i don't that's not the right read for for you yeah um, the 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 re again the whatever's closest to you is the most mm-hmm. important thing for you and your sound so for a clarinetist it's the read yeah so uh so we want that the the read to be you know the fibers to be straight up and down look at it in the light uh and you want some resistance if the reed is too thin it's going to close off Mm -hmm. and then they won't make that sound so uh you know get them on a stronger reed uh as soon as possible uh i've even started kids on two and a halves uh in the past uh with pretty good success uh, but it all depends on the musculature of the student. Yeah. Yeah. I try and tell them don't buy more than like one of those three packs of the size two. We're going to grow out of them pretty quickly. And yeah. Yep. Yeah. I say reads are like shoe sizes. You know, once, uh, once we've been playing for a while, um, mouthpieces, ligatures, like when, when should we start thinking beyond the, the stock that comes with your instrument? So the, the, the stock mouthpieces are, are super scary okay. as well. So uh, there's a couple options. You can start them with a decent mouthpiece that's not a stock mouthpiece. Some rental companies will allow you to choose a mouthpiece to go along with the rental. Uh, mm-hmm. And if that's the case, I would either go with a Premier by Height or a Phobes debut. They might. The rental companies will usually give you the Premiers. Uh, I'm not sure about the Phobes, uh, but Phobes is a is an even better sounding mouthpiece than the the Height Premier. Um, and uh, so you could start with the stock, then go then go to. Uh, a Hype Premier or a Phobes. Uh, there's also a, a newer one by Bakun, which is also very good too. It's called the uh, Protege. Okay. And that one is is very is very nice also, but that one's a little more expensive. That one's about fifty dollars. When the Height and Phobes are about thirty dollars. Mm-hmm. And uh, if you put it in your rental package, depending on your company, it'll just it'll just slightly increase the rental cost. Uh, in there, so best best option is try to get it from the beginning, uh-huh. or uh, at least try to get it, you know, towards the end of the first year. I put it on my like holiday shopping list. Yeah, for <laughs> for for like my first and second year kids, like you know, oh, looking for a stocking stuffer. Here's a <laughs> oh, it's great. Hi- hi- I like I I send that email out in uh, in like like right after Thanksgiving, you know, because. Uh, 
like we've been playing for a while. If you're not on a two and a half read, get a box of two and a half reads. And, you know, like, yeah, uh, saxophones, upgrade your neck strap. Like, don't just live with the strap that's cutting into your neck. Get one of these. And, yeah. yeah. I send that. Yeah, so that, that's great. I, I love the holiday shopping, uh, you know, recommendations. I mean, what other kind of things outside of, you know, our time together in class would you recommend for, for, young clarinetists like resources like what do you want to send home what what can we find out there in the world that would be good uh for for our clarinetists so in the in the very beginning it's just good for the teacher to to send out with their students some some help sheets uh you know i always give a first week or first month uh to-do list and uh, and words of encouragement uh, okay. in those in those lists on, okay, uh, you know, we're only going to play on the mouthpiece and barrel. Don't put the whole instrument together. This is why. Okay. And then and that's more for the parents. Mm. And then uh, and then also, uh, you know, now we have the first the first half of the instrument together, and we're not putting the rest of it together. Again, here's why, because sometimes yeah. even the parents will ask and start right. to be like, why isn't my instrument, his instrument put together yet? It's been, right. it's been two months. So yeah. we put those sheets together just of, of, our, of our own tidbits of information. Mm-hmm. And of course, you know, how, long, how long should I be practicing? All right, that's all subjective. Uh, and and wh- wh- you know, how to practice is really important, something on how to practice. Yeah. And, uh, and then uh, you can send uh, YouTube links uh, on how to how to care for the instrument and how to uh, put it together properly. Uh, Doctor Selfridge is a is a popular okay. uh, person on YouTube. Uh, mm-hmm. He has tutorials on every instrument and he, and has a has a whole clarinet series, uh, but okay. very informative, very. Uh, uh, very accurate okay. with everything. Uh, I, I think that's a good resource if a, if a student can't remember how to put their instrument together properly, uh, yeah. then uh, then they can go to that. Okay. Um, and then uh, as far as uh, th- when they get more advanced, uh, there's there's a social media page called the Clarinet Academy. And there's okay. tons of warm-ups and and tone builders and how to practice things properly. Uh, that's oh. that's more towards the more serious players, though. Yeah, and that goes all that's the way great. through college and professional level playing. But otherwise, I think we've we've covered a lot of we we've covered a lot of bases here. I know we really did. We hit we hit a lot. And, and um, thanks for sharing all that awesome information and now if if we have questions uh for you how can we get in touch with you you can get in touch with me many ways you have my okay. school email of course uh it, of course it's the most complicated email address on the planet right you know, that would be j bittner b-i-t-t-n-e-r at mawa dot k12 dot nj dot us okay yeah that's a fun one that's good uh, oh, yeah. or in an easier <laughs> way uh emails such as uh jbitney2 at gmail.com uh okay. is easy i don't have i mean i do have social media uh mm-hmm. you can find uh my my instagram is jbits okay J B I T T Z. uh and then and then jeff bittner on facebook Again, we, we're, we're so thankful to have you on today. To our listeners, if you liked what you heard today um, and uh, you want to get in touch with us uh, for Take a Cue, we're Take a Cue Podcast on Facebook and Instagram. Um, if you really, really liked what you heard today, uh, please give us a rating and a review um, on your favorite podcast app. Um, and even consider becoming a monthly supporter. There's a link to that in our show notes about how to do that. Everything goes right back into the, the podcast. Um, if you have ideas for episodes or uh, 
and maybe a clarinet part two, <laughs> uh, you know, something like that, or, or questions uh, for us or or uh, or Mr. Bittner, um, please, please get in touch with us on, on social media. We're always uh, happy to hear from you. Thanks. Thanks again, Jeff, for coming on. And let's get out there and make some great music. All right. <laughs> I'll see you soon. Thanks. Thank you.